Good morning and welcome to worship here at Lamington Presbyterian Church. We are delighted that many of you could gather with us in person and we welcome those of you who are worshiping with us online this morning as well. We extend a happy Mother's Day to all the mothers and grandmothers in the crowd and I want to wish my mom a happy Mother's Day because she's usually worshiping on Zoom with us. We also thank all the women who have served motherly roles um, in our lives. So many people act as mothers to us, and so we thank you for that. This morning's beautiful flowers on the Lord's table are in memory of Mary Ann Legato, the mother of Meredith Scott and Janet Legato, and Mary Ann and Susan Scott's grandmother. So we celebrate her memory this morning with those gorgeous flowers. We also extend our um, prayers and Christian sympathy to the family of Adam Fisher upon the death of his mother, Joan, last week. It's never an easy time to lose someone, but to grieve a mother today is especially hard. And so um, we think of that family and her death short, followed so shortly after his own father's death. Um, so it's a tough time to grieve. We pray for all of those who are grieving this morning. Um, just a special announcement about Basket Day. We've already collected some gems and promises for the promise tree, but we are still welcoming any of your lovely, wonderful pieces that you would like to donate. So please take a look at the list of requests in the bulletin. And if you have anything to contribute to the barn sale um, or donate a promise to the promise tree, please let us know. You also ought to be on the lookout in your mailbox for something special regarding Basket Day this week. Our community garden day for the garden across the street, which um, needs more preparation for its harvest season, um, got a little bit rained out yesterday. And so we do welcome anybody who's available this coming Saturday, that's May 15th at 1 o'clock, um, to come help out just for a couple hours to get the raised beds prepared. Um, and if you all are available, please let Pam or Dave Smith know. They're here today, but also you can look up the information on the website this week if you think of it any time. Look at your calendars and let them know. Um, I think that's it for the announcements. Um, and at this point, I invite you to stand as you are able and together join with me in the responsive call to worship. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Make a joyful noise to the Lord all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, make a joyful noise before the King, the Lord.
Friends, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But when we confess our sin, God, who is faithful and just, cleanses us from our sin and frees us from all unrighteousness. Therefore, in faith and in humility, let us confess our sin before God and one another using the prayer of confession. Holy God, we regret that we have not loved you as you love us, nor have we obeyed your every command. Forgive us for the ways that we have failed to love your children, for the moments we have acted selfishly, for the times when we have betrayed our friends and rejected people whom you have chosen for us in our lives. Restore us to new life, that we would have a renewed sense of love and joy in Jesus Christ. We continue in a time of silent and personal confession. Amen. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ, and Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. Christ prays for us. Anyone in Christ is a new creation. The old is dead and gone. Behold, the new has come. I declare to you in the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now with the joy and the love we receive as forgiven children of God, let us gratefully and joyfully pass the peace of Christ with one another. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with each of you. Peace. Uh, the prayer for illumination. Holy God, we thank you for the gift of your written word, which tells us the story of your love and how you empowered us to share it. Open our ears that we would hear your words an anew this day, and open our hearts that we would offer them freely to your beloved children. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The first reading is from John 5, 1 through 6. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whatever is born of God conquers the world. And this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with the water only, but with the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. God be with you.
That was beautiful. Thank you to the Handbell Choir making their debut in 2021 here in May. We are grateful to have you all together playing, offering that beautiful music to God. And I have to share with the congregation that I heard several of the players tell me that they didn't, didn't even know how to read music. So Beth has done a wonderful job in preparing them for that beautiful song. Thank you. Our second scripture this morning comes from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 15, verses 9 through 17. Listen now for God's word to you this day. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from the Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. One of the first memorable lessons that I learned in seminary had nothing to do with the language of the New Testament, yet I heard it just before my biblical Greek studies course. My preset teacher was a young mom, and one day I arrived early to class, particularly early, which is not usual for me, so it sticks out in my mind. We made small talk while waiting for the other students to arrive, and so she told me a little bit about her toddler son and his silly antics, saying that she worried about him whenever she sent him off to school. So She was worried what his behavior was like, and she was trying to prepare him every time they said goodbye. So when she would send him off to school, she would say, make good choices. And it was that simple, I thought. What else do we need to know in life? Well, certainly God loves us, and as a result, we're supposed to make good choices. Sure, I'm watering it down a bit, but you just heard Jesus say this. In John, we read that as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. Love one another as I have loved you. Love is not optional. It's an imperative. He commands us to love. He expects us to choose to love, and for good reason. When we love, we experience joy. He says, I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. And then Jesus reminds us of the choice that matters most to us. Jesus says, I chose you and I appointed you to go and bear fruit. First, we are chosen and loved, and then we are sent off to make our own good choices. There are a lot of choices and options these days. In fact, sometimes it seems that there are too many. The world tries to trick us into believing that our choices are about how we want to live as individuals or what we want to do with our own lives. Yet in faith, Jesus commands us to live toward a greater more divine purpose, choosing first to love one another. We didn't choose him first, he chose us. And that reality transforms all our other choices. We are chosen and loved, 
and we are invited to participate in his family. When we choose to follow him, when we choose to love, then we let go a part of ourselves for his divine purpose to come to fruition. The gospel has always been countercultural because we often have to lay down our lives in order to show our love. In terms of our survival, it's not natural for us to put the lives of others ahead of our own. But as people of faith, this is how we are taught to live. For example, think of families. Whether you've been in a covenant relationship or you have had a child, there are times when making the choice to love one another is hard and sacrificial. We lose a part of ourselves when we combine our lives with our spouses in marriage. We give up a lot when we become parents. Laying down our lives does not necessarily mean death, but it is a choice that we make daily to give our love away. This does not mean we lose love or have any less to share. For when we offer our love, God multiplies it in our lives. It is not a mathematical equation. This is how our joy becomes complete. Every day we get the opportunity to lay down our own agenda in order to live for God's. We make good choices when we exercise love, both with our friends and family, as well as with complete strangers. Consider a fussy child on a long plane ride. Most passengers reach for their noise-canceling headphones and try to ignore the problem, hoping that their seat is far away from that poor family. Yet Lucy, who is sitting right in front of such a young girl and her mother, decided to turn around and make silly faces at the crying child. She played peekaboo. She turned the girl's sobs into giggles. She asked her questions about where she was going and if this was her first flight. She sometimes scared, uh, shared that she too is a little bit afraid on a plane, and then she looks out the window to find a pretty view. Moments pass, and the child settles down. Even her mother is surprised by this stranger's attention. Lucy turns back around in her seat, and her husband sitting next to her smiles, thinking that after decades of marriage, he's completely in love with her all over again because he delights in watching her give herself away to others. Or then there's Doris, who lives alone in a continuing care unit. The pandemic has added to her feelings of isolation and loneliness, so she picks up the phone to call an old friend. And mistakenly, she dials the wrong number. Sid answers the phone. He too is aging faster than he would like, and he lives by himself. So he tells Doris that she has the wrong number, but then Sid gets to know Doris a bit. They begin to chat and share their stories with one another. After some time goes by, they decide to exchange phone numbers so that they can intentionally, intentionally call the right number and keep in touch in the future. Sid could have hung up the phone on Doris, but he offered some of his time and attention instead. He laid down what he was doing to love. It helps to have someone on the receiving end listening. Have you ever noticed that there are some people who seem less annoyed by the interruptions of everyday life? Whether it's a fussy child or a missed up phone call, there are some people that tolerate these things, that approach everything with an aura of love. Journalist David Brooks recently published a book entitled The Second Mountain, The Quest for Moral Life. In the introduction, he reflects on this kind of person who lives with joy. Perhaps it's the kind of complete joy that Jesus references. Brooks writes that every once in a while, I meet a person who radiates joy. These are people who seem to glow with an inner light. They are kind, tranquil, delighted by small pleasures, and grateful for the large ones. They make errors in judgment but they live for others and not for themselves. They've made unshakable commitments to family, a cause, a community, or a faith. 
when you meet these people, you realize that joy is not just a feeling. It can be an outlook. There are temporary highs that we all get after we win some victory. And then there's also this other kind of permanent joy that animates people who are not obsessed with themselves, but have given themselves away. When we give ourselves away, when we lay down our lives, then we love without condition or expectation. As people of faith, we know that to have received the gift of love is to be taught how to do it. To live into the joy that Jesus offers us is to choose to love without thought for what we get out of it or what we may have to give up but for the sake of being in relationship with one another. Love as a verb. To love is meant to be in action, dropping everything to help someone else out, cooking a meal for your neighbor recovering from surgery, donating food to the food bank, getting vaccinated so you can hug your grandchildren, flying across the country to attend a funeral, checking in on that friend that you just haven't seen in a while. Jesus implores his disciples to practice these acts of love on one another. He teaches them to use their community as a laboratory where they can figure out the best way to live out their ministries and make the love of Christ real to others. The same charge rings true for us now as each day is a new opportunity to obey this great commandment. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now I invite you to stand as you are able, and together let us affirm the faith of the Christian church using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Will you join me in prayer? Holy God, we praise you for listening to us when we reach out to you. And we thank you for providing such a firm foundation in our lives. We think of so many people who live in disarray. As we lift up our prayers to you this morning, we remember you as the source of wholeness and restoration for all. We lift up to you broken and depleted homes, survivors of tornadoes and storms, casualties of broken infrastructure and health care systems, victims of COVID. We pray for those suffering the attack in Afghanistan and for all the losses that cause pain both near and far. We surrender our fears as we seek to put our hope in the one through whom you chose for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. O God of love, all other loves excelling, we are privileged to be your eternal family, to be children of such a parent loving us so perfectly. On this beautiful Mother's Day morning, we come to you celebrating the gift of family. We thank you for lending us your children to nurture and to raise with the love you first extended to us. We ask your blessings on small families, large ones, multi-generational families, single-person families, and broken families through Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
We see all kinds of families with every sort of challenge, joy, failure, and pain. We thank you for the variety of fathers and mothers in our lives as we list, lift up a special prayer for women, for those who are not called to be mothers. We respect them. For those who are pregnant with new life, both expected and surprising, we anticipate with them. For those mothers who gave birth this year, we rejoice with them. For those who have lost a child, we mourn with them. For those who are in the trenches with little ones every day, we see them. For those who experienced loss through miscarriage, failed adoptions, or running away, we mourn with them. For those who walk the hard path of infertility, fraught with pokes, prods, tears, and disappointment, we walk with them. For those who are foster moms, mentor moms, step moms, spiritual moms, we need them. For those who have warm and close relationships with their children, we delight with them. For those who have disappointment, heartache, and distance with their children, we sit with them. For those who have lost their mothers, we grieve with them. For those who experienced abuse from their mother, we lament with them. For those who lived through driving tests, medical tests, and the overall test of motherhood, we are better for them. For those mothers who are sick, we pray for their healing and strength. We especially lift up Celestina this morning as she struggles with her health in India. And we pray a special blessing over Monica and her family as they pray for her and care for her from afar. For those who have emptier nests, we grieve and rejoice with them. Help us to walk with all mothers, that they would feel your presence in their lives. Empower us to love with the unconditional parental love that you model for us. Just as parents celebrate their children long before welcoming them home, Father God, we know that you also celebrate us before we become fully who you created us to be. We need your kind of love for each other. And so we ask you to heal damaged relationships and painful memories. Show us how to deal with our grief and regret and anger. Make us grateful when we have been parented wisely and well. And help us to let go all the times that we have mistaken. Remind us all that we always have you and this covenant family, a home away from home. For you are like a mother who will not abandon the child in her arms, like a father who runs to welcome the prodigal home. We pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ, your son, our risen Lord, who taught us to pray together, saying, our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. In response to the love of God and God's great gift to us in Jesus Christ, we now take time to give of our tithes and offerings. Our giving looks different in the pandemic. We offer a gift in the back plate in the sanctuary. You may offer online or you may mail in a check. But this is also a time when we pause and offer ourselves to God again, when we rededicate our lives as we meditate on the doxology.
you join me in prayer? Without your love, O oh Lord, we are nothing. Without your giving, we have received nothing. Without your gifts, we have nothing. Receive back these, our gifts of love, that you may be always all to us. May our love grow even now as we give of ourselves and that which we value. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. that you love one another as I have loved you. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each of you and those whom you love, wherever they are this day and always. Amen. <laughs> Beautiful, wonderful friends. 